Welcome to Tesla Info and today we've got quite a big one which is the new adaptive headlights, how they compare to just the old high beam and how they compare to BMW. We're going to start with Pili Tesla. At the top we're going to show the adaptive headlights, at the bottom the pre-adaptive headlights, the same car uh, and you can form your own opinion as it does the same journey. What we can essentially see um, is that when the headlights are on full beam and there is no reason to adapt, um, essentially the, the headlights do exactly the same thing. You know, they light up the road in pretty much exactly the same way. There are slight differences in terms of how quickly they turn on and off the full high beam, um, but otherwise we feel that the image is uh, almost identical. We're going to let the footage roll for a little bit here. We're in a country where we drive on the left, so this is a right-hand drive car. But what you can see is the left edge um, is more brightly illuminated than the right side of the road, which is essentially where pedestrians would normally be, be for us. We're now going to go through some sort of quite tight left and right turns. Um, we're going to compare this to the BMW later. Um, we always thought the BMW steered into the corners a little bit, the headlights. Um, and we'll compare those later on to see whether you can notice any difference between the Tesla and the BMW. What we're seeing with the Tesla, however, is basically full beams, full beam. Uh, we're now going to enter into a, a built up area. Um, it's street lit. It's still fairly rural. And we can see as we enter the, uh, the village, um, the headlights are still both on full beam or high beam. What we do see in a second is the fact that the adaptive headlights do start to turn off and off certain elements just based on almost like reflections or various things. There is, however, still a very pronounced illumination of the footpath, which is on the left hand side of this car. And remember, this is a left hand or we drive on the left here. So it's the, it's the side closest to the car. So one thing that does surprise us a little bit is with other cars, we expect the headlights to dip in uh, built up areas. Um, even the adaptive headlights still stay on as bright as they can, irrespective of pedestrians or, or other uh, people that um, it, it, they only basically dip for cars. If you come around this corner we'll see at the top that the adaptive headlights actually meet an oncoming car and they've actually do dip we can see the left hand side is still fairly well illuminated but the right hand side had actually dipped down to not dazzle the car coming towards us so again and i guess it's not really surprising there isn't an awful lot of difference between the adaptive and the pre-adaptive headlights when you're just looking at, you know, when essentially full beam can be full beam or high beam can be high beam. Okay, we now switch to a, a faster road with more oncoming traffic. And we can see with the at the bottom where we have the pre-adaptive headlights, it's on low beam um, because of the online traffic before it can flick to high beam. Whereas the top picture has the high beam and it actually illuminates a lot more of the of the road or more in particular the actual the side verges i think one thing we notice with the with the adaptive headlights is it will occasionally blank certain parts of the headlights like it's doing now it's just cleared it um even when there's no obvious reason why there is i suppose it's being slightly more cautious but in general it will obviously keep a lot more of the full beam headlights on when it can. The non-adaptive headlights just dip when they've got oncoming cars and we'll see now at the adaptive headlights it's got a car approaching and you can already see it starting to close down part of the headlights as the car approaches keeping the high beam on. Look at the high uh, light spread on the left hand side and now it's turned the right hand side back on again to full beam as those cars have gone. 
at the bottom of the screen um, the pre-adaptive headlights are now following the car and essentially you can see that the high beam has essentially turned itself off um, and the amount of illumination is therefore much lower at the top you can see that the adaptive high beam is on although again we've got I suppose at this point we've got a car coming towards us so it started to dip again but if you notice the hedge line on the left hand side the adaptive headlights do light up a, a lot more of the hedge line one thing that we're not so keen on with the adaptive headlights you'll see that it often makes like a v in the road where the lights spread to the left and to the right and not actually in the middle so it's almost like it's lighting up the sides of the road but not actually projecting down the road The adaptive headlights now, or the car with them on, is now approaching a car, so it's now following the car. And this is an example where you'd expect the full beam to stay on either side, and just the car in the middle of the road to be effectively blanked out. And we'll, we'll freeze the image in a minute, and you can see the difference between how much of the surroundings of the car on the top have been lit up it's much higher to the right and to the left than it is with the pre-adaptive headlights where the headlights are essentially dipped and that's one of the main advantages of the adaptive headlights the fact that they can illuminate you know the road surrounding an obstacle that it needs to blank out i mean that's essentially what it, adaptive headlights are doing okay we'll resume the footage now and so now we're following the car where we've got the illumination on both sides of the car and when we have oncoming traffic we'll still want to keep the left hand edge illuminated but we need to dip on the right hand edge to not dazzle the cars coming forwards and we can see that's exactly what happens with the adaptive headlights we couldn't recreate exactly the same traffic in exactly the same spots for obvious reasons but we'll just let the footage roll on a little bit so you can see more examples of the headlights turning on and off on the adaptive headlights whereas the pre-adaptive headlights are essentially just having to stay down wait a period of time before they go back to full beam the adaptive headlights do actually seem to turn back on the full beam reasonably quickly much more quickly than the pre-adaptive headlights would re-enable The last example we're going to show is the Tesla with adaptive headlights following a car on a twisty road and the car in front is actually going to be moving left and right relative to the Tesla and therefore the adaptive headlights need to track the location of the car to make sure it's always in a dipped area. Watch it, you can almost see the individual pixels of light or blocks of light turn on and off. Um, almost strobing on the left hand edge then as the car is moving position okay we have a left hand turn corner here and we can see the right hand light sort of tracking the car just a little bit wider of the car which is exactly what you'd hope to see it's now also dipped now because it's got a vehicle coming towards it okay we can see a lot of the hedgerows uh, lit up on both sides and effectively a small box uh, around the car that's been followed so it seems to do its job quite well and it seems to be fairly reliable in terms of tracking the vehicle in front and dipping for oncoming vehicles and certainly we didn't experience anybody flashing us or trying to tell us our full beam was on which we think is a you know is a, an encouraging sign so that's the end of the tesla adaptive headlights compared to the pre-adaptive headlights and we're now going to have a switch and compare them to bmw the first example is effectively a quite a tight corner and the BMW is sort of claimed to be able to steer into corners. Um, we don't actually notice much difference between the two. What is very noticeable is the harshness of the Tesla headlights compared to the BMW. And these are both filmed using the same camera. The Tesla seems to be almost like violently illuminated, whereas the, Tesla, the BMW seems to have a much softer spread. When following a car 
um, we also see that the BMW seems to have a, a, a very neat box around the car in front um, and can actually almost zoom in it quite tightly. So we'd probably give it to the edge, but the, the Tesla is very, very credible. So for a first incarnation of adaptive headlights with the Tesla, um, knowing that they can you know, improve them with, with software updates, we think it's actually quite a, quite a success and certainly a massive improvement on the old adaptive headlights. If, if there's anything compared to the BMW, it's probably the resolution or the number of pixels or something of the headlights doesn't seem as high. Uh, and so you get some strange artifacts or much more uh, clear uh, demarcation of, of lights. And you can see individual, you know, almost like elements turning on and off. But overall, we would call this a success for Tesla and very welcome.